Hey guys, today I'm doing my September favorites. I know I'm a little bit late for this video, but I have just been all over the place the last month. I had a horrible allergic reaction. Um, I traveled a lot. I was just, things were super busy. Things are still super busy, but last month was just the worst. Um, I think you guys could tell by my sporadic uploading schedule. Just had a whole lot of stuff going on and things were just super hectic, so... I apologize for that, but I figured this video is better late than never, and I do have quite a lot of things that I wanted to share with you guys, so I'm going to go through these pretty quick. If there are certain things about products or things that I don't touch on that you're curious about, then you can of course just leave me a comment down below and I will get back to you. I guess the first thing I should address, because I know I'm going to get questions about it and a lot of you guys were asking me in my previous video about it, is uh, my hair. Yes, I have black hair again, and I was just kind of like... I can't believe I intentionally dyed my hair back to my natural hair color because I just, I like having lighter hair and I've just never really liked black hair on myself, but I needed to do it because my hair needs to get healthy again and I needed to go back to my natural hair color. Um, I would say to about the brow, this is all virgin hair, all of this, and then the ends were just color matched. Um, so... Growing out my hair to its natural hair color, I went to the hair salon and I told the stylist to just cut off all the damage and I'll deal with it. I'll deal with however short you have to cut it, just cut off all the bad spots because my hair had probably been bleached five times. It had been like bleached, colored, bleached, colored. You know, I had probably about five processes, maybe more in certain spots of bleach and my hair had just become sedentary, like it stopped growing. It was breaking off and actually getting shorter and it just it needed to be cut and since it's been cut it's been growing like it's not growing faster but I noticed the growth whereas when it was damaged it you know it was as if it wasn't growing at all so yeah I don't know but I'm gonna get started with makeup and the first thing that I wanted to talk about is a primer this is the NYX Honey Do Me Up primer I don't even know if I can exactly pinpoint what it is about this primer that I love so much. I think that it does help with longevity of makeup, it prevents makeup from breaking down, oxidizing, and it gives me a nice primed feeling canvas to start applying base makeup to, which is all that I really look for in a primer. I and in all seriousness, this is like a slimy goo <laughs> that you apply to your face, but it's really like a slime and you just, <laughs> that sounds so gross. It's just kind of slippery. It's like a liquid almost it's gelatinous there we'll say that I know that's not even that great of a word to describe this but what else am I gonna say and it has gold flakes in it and it just um, you apply it to your face and you probably need to wait about a minute minute and a half maybe two minutes until it really sets into the skin but it just gives you like this nice slippery perfect canvas to apply makeup to I think it's great and I've been reaching for this one so much lately. Next thing I want to talk about is from IT Cosmetics. It is the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. This one is in the shade Neutral Medium. This gets kind of 50-50 reviews across the board. Like some people really hate it, some people really love it. I'm someone who formerly really hated it and now I really love it because I found the best way to use it for myself and that is on days where I'm going for minimal no makeup makeup type of looks, which is my everyday type of look. I'll either be wearing no makeup at all or just a little bit to get me through and make me look presentable. You guys know what I'm talking about, but if you use too much of this, it looks god awful. It creases awful, horrible, just creases so bad, and then it can actually start separating under the eye and then it almost looks scaly. That's just what happens to me. You just use the tiniest bit. It is amazing at how little product it takes to cover up a dark circle or a dark blemish or redness around the nose or anything like that. You just have to use the most minuscule amount and it has a gorgeous skin-like finish and looks really natural. So I've really been liking this and I think the best way to apply this is to use the warmth of your fingers to kind of bring out the emollency of the product and then you can blend it out with a beauty blender. But I wouldn't recommend a brush just because of how emollient this is, it can show uh, brush strokes. So use your finger or a sponge. I have three lip products to talk with you guys about. Um, the first one is the Mauve Lip Liner by NYX. I can't remember if I've put this in a favorites video or not, but you guys ask me so much. Like, 
Whenever I'm wearing this lip liner, I get a million questions about what lip color I'm wearing, and it's this. Um, I wear this on its own with just a clear gloss on top of it all the time, and you guys are always asking, and I recommend it to everyone. So this is Mauve by NYX. It's just the perfect everyday lip liner. I have been loving Heather's from Anastasia. Gorgeous fall color. It's very deep though, so it's not for everyone. But because this is a liquid lipstick, I can wear my hair down with this. If I'm going to be wearing a dark lip and it's not a matte, then my hair is going to be up. Because I hate when my hair swings on my lips and then it just leaves color all across the cheek. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. So Heather's is just like a really gorgeous deep brick red perfect for fall. This next product is like a treat yourself product. It is the most luxurious lip balm that I've ever used. Um, this is the Tatcha Gold Camellia, I believe is how you say, Camellia Lip Balm. And when you get this, it has gold leaf all on top of it. It has a patch of gold leaf and it's just really Luxurious. I don't know how else to describe this. This is a very luxe lip balm. This one is really great. Super hydrating. If you have extra dry, cracked lips, I think this would totally be your savior. I wake up in the morning and my lips are just like so plump and hydrated. I love it. So those were all my beauty favorites. Like I said, I didn't really have a ton of beauty favorites. I didn't really have time to be experimenting with a ton of new products. But I do have some new nail polish products that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I have been absolutely loving the Essie Fall 2015 collection. However you guys know, Essie is my favorite nail polish brand, um, so I had to put two of these in there. This first one is the Essie Polish in I'm With The Band, again, Fall 2015, and then the other one is Essie Frock and Roll. This is like smoking hot with glitter, like really finely milled silver glitter throughout it. And then I'm With The Band, I would compare to Brownie Points, it's a little bit more orange than brownie points and it's a little bit brighter. Both of these are gorgeous. I and then the other nail polish that I've really been loving is from Zoya. This is Raven. It is a black with a really intense uh, shimmer iridescence throughout it. It's almost like a silver shimmer. So it's kind of like this smoky gray black. It's really beautiful. And I prefer this over just a stark straight up black. Um, I mean, I love black nail polish too, but it's fun to switch it up and find a black lacquer that's a little bit more unique. So I'm going to try to go as long as I can in between each wash, so I've been using a ton of dry shampoo lately. And I've mentioned this in an empties video, but I've never put it in a formal favorites video. Um, my favorite dry shampoo of all time is the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. And I also have re really been loving their um, Silken Up Dry Conditioner. So what I do is I just shake this up and apply it I hold it about a foot away from my head um, because if I apply it too close then I do get a white cast but look at me I have like super black roots and this still doesn't leave a white cast in my hair so I spray it into my roots um, and then I take the dry conditioner spray that throughout the mid shaft of my hair put my hair up go take a shower then when I get out of the shower let my hair down massage the dry shampoo into my scalp and brush out the dry conditioner because I like to give it a couple minutes to like really soak up all the oil and the dirt and then my hair looks good as new. Um, my hair is actually, I think I'm on like fourth day here today. Four, I'm on fifth, day, fifth hair day today. And um, my hair is still, it doesn't look that greasy. But it is time to wash it. And because I've been going so long in between washes and using dry shampoo, I have been having a lot of product buildup. And so this is the shampoo that I've been using. Um, this is the John Frieda Cool Dip Purifying Shampoo. And I also have the conditioner that matches with it. However, I don't find myself reaching for the conditioner because I don't really like it that much. But the conditioner, is, but the shampoo is really great. Um, I use this about once a week. Not every time I wash my hair, but I make sure I use it at least once a week when my hair starts getting a lot of product buildup. And it just totally makes your hair squeaky clean. That's why I don't like to use it too often. And it smells like mint. It's like a very strong mint scent. So when my hair is just washed with this stuff, um, it swings in my face and I'm like, ooh, that's fresh. <laughs> because I've never had a mint scented shampoo and conditioner, so it's really great. I really love the smell of this stuff. Um, but like I said, I only use this once a week. I won't use this more than once a week because I just think that would like totally strip my hair of all its good natural oils. So my first 
fashion favorite is t-shirt dresses. I've been loving these to just throw on with a sweater on top, a jacket, and I just wear them with either little booties or my Converse low top chucks, the white ones. And I have this gray one. They're just short sleeves. They have a nice scoop neck and they're this nice ribbed cotton material so I do have this gray one and then I also have a black one as well again same thing scoop neck uh, short sleeves this nice ribbed material and they're just kind of I love the way they fit and they look so casual and you can dress them up or down any way that you want because they're so basic and plain I mean they really go with anything and my favorite way to wear these is just this dress, a pair of uh, my chucks, and then a jacket on top. And I just think it's like super cute and effortless and it looks, it just looks good. I've also really been loving um, chambray shirts. I love the denim on denim trend, wearing a denim chambray shirt with denim pants. Uh, not the same wash of denim, different washes of denim. I don't like the whole jumpsuit look with denim on denim, but I like to mix up denim and wear a denim chambray shirt with denim pants. Um, this is not my favorite one that I have, but I do wear this one quite often. This one's from Old Navy, and it's just kind of like a American denim blue. I don't really know how else I would describe this wash because it's uh, slightly lighter than a medium wash or what I would consider a medium wash. I just think this is like USA blue. This one is loose and is a more casual kind of tomboy fit. So um, I like to wear this one buttoned up or tie it at the waist a little bit with some high waist jeans. That way you just see like a little slip of skin or tuck it into the jeans. Another chambray shirt that I've really been loving is from The Gap. And this one is, as you guys can see, pretty much a, the lightest shade of denim that you can get. Um, this one I was wearing the other day, so it's really wrinkly. Um, but this one, again, is a really loose fit, even more loose than the old navy one. And this one looks really nice if I wear just like a gray tank underneath and leave this one open and unbuttoned and just kind of wear it as almost like a shirt jacket or something like that. But it's also pretty buttoned up and tucked into jeans, but it's definitely a lot more loose of a boxy fit and it's tomboy, so I like to wear it with fitted pants and some heels or something just so I don't look frumpy, <laughs> you know what I mean? My favorite shoes to wear during this summer to fall transition are mules. I think that they just look so good with your transitioning wardrobe because you're wearing pieces from your summer wardrobe and starting to incorporate it with more of your fall wardrobe and I just think mules are the perfect shoe to mix in with those outfits so these ones are from Target they are the brand Wasino and they are just a traditional black faux leather mule surprisingly these ones are really hard to walk in I can't wear these ones around that much like if I'm going to be doing a lot of walking I will not wear these because they start to make my ankles really uncomfortable. So, And then my other favorite pair, these ones are from 14th and Union, and these ones are really comfortable and easy to walk in. Um, and I like these ones because they have that little band of leather detailing right there, so they're just kind of cool and chic and very pretty, and I really like these ones as well too. And these ones, like I said, are a lot more comfortable to wear. And this next pair of shoes, or boots. I am so excited about these are my wellies. I got these for my birthday. Um, these are the matte black. I was gonna, they're not the gloss ones. Um, I just thought the gloss ones were gonna be like a little bit too obnoxious and not my style. So I decided to go with the matte ones and I'm so happy with them. Um, I wear these even when it's not raining just because I was so excited to get these. But when it's raining, I'm like, yes, I get to wear my wellies. Um, yeah, I really like them. And then my last fashion favorite of the month has definitely been my large Longchamp La Pliage in black. Um, I have the medium Longchamp and I don't use it. I never get any use out of it. The size of it is so impractical for me. I just can't fit anything into it. It's not a handbag that I want to be carrying around as strictly my handbag. So I never use the medium tote. It can't fit my computer in it. Like it just doesn't fit anything into it. So never got any use out of it so I upgraded to the large size it fits you know 
two days worth of clothes into it for me, a pair of shoes, my computer, my makeup bag, like it really does fit a lot of stuff into it now, but I love these because you can fit so much into them and then they fold into nothing because they have all these snaps on them and then it seriously folds itself into a square that's like this big. The large size is definitely great as a computer bag, book bag, um, weekend bag if you're going away for like two days or something. Highly recommend. I've been using this every single day just to bring my computer back and forth and bring, you know, whatever I need back and forth into it. So love that bag. All right, guys. So that's the end of my September favorites. I know this is a crazy amount of footage and I'm going to try to condense it into something that's not going to be stupid long. But who knows, maybe this is going to end up stupid long. Hopefully not. But like I said, if you have any questions about any of the products that I mentioned or talked about them, please leave them down below and I will for sure get back to you. Please come follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I will have all three of those linked down below as well. I will also try to have every single product for you guys directly linked down below as always. And yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to say. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.